Yo, what's going on YouTube? It's Midnight back again, bringing you an extra special video today. This is by far the biggest video that I've ever made for my channel. A lot of time and effort has gone into this, so I hope that you enjoy, and hopefully it doesn't suck. I'm going to be ranking the 23 games and expansions that I beat in 2023, from worst to the best. Now, these are games that I beat in 2023, not necessarily games that came out in 2023. It's a mixed bag of release years. Now, I will highlight my game of the year for 2023 when it comes up, though, so you know, because it may not be number one on the overall list. I do want to note none of these games are bad. Just some are better than others. Even the number 23 game, I wouldn't consider bad. Still pretty decent. This is going to be spoiler-free, or as close to that as I can get, so you don't have to worry about that. But without further ado, this is going to be a long video. Let's get right into it with number 23. All right, number 23, we have Ravenlock. Ravenlock is an indie action RPG by Coco Cucumber. It's available on Xbox One, Xbox Series, and PC. This is a cool little indie adventure game. It has a very unique art style, as you can see. Um, there's some quests in there, there's puzzles, there's some fun boss fights, that's pretty cool. Um, the things about it that maybe I didn't like so much, some of the puzzles in the game, it doesn't always tell you what to do clearly. I had to use a couple guides. I'm like, what am I supposed to do? Where am I supposed to go? That may be a me issue. I would say everything is serviceable in this game, but nothing really stands out as amazing. Ravenlock, it's a good game. It only asks for about four to five hours of your time. Unique and cool art style. Like I said, pretty cool game. I do recommend it. Sakamoto At number 22, we have Like a Dragon Ishin. This is an action adventure game from Ryuga Gotaku RGG. It's a remaster of the original 2014 game. Available on PS3, PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Xbox Series, and PC. Um, this is a remaster. It has upgraded visuals. It has a very cool feudal Japanese setting and story. It has the usual Yakuza slash Like a Dragon epic story combined with funny side missions, which they're known for. But what I would say the bad is the game felt very dated. The combat felt stiff, and you could just tell that the game was from 2014, especially the combat. Uh, it even feels older than 2014, if I'm being honest. In my opinion, this is the weakest of the Yakuza Like a Dragon games that I've experienced so far, but I did still enjoy my time overall. It'll take you between 24 and 45 hours to beat this game, depending on playstyle. It's a good story with fun side content, but you can definitely feel its age. I recommend it for fans of Yakuza, and if you just want to, you know, have a little bit of fun in a feudal Japanese setting. There's nothing I wouldn't do to save this world. No depth I won't explore. At number 21, Horizon Forbidden West, an action-adventure game from Guerrilla, available exclusively for PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5. Now this may be somewhat lower on the list than some people may think. I know there are a lot of Horizon fans out there, but for me, this game just didn't completely do it for me. What's good about the game? Absolutely stunning, beautiful graphics. Cool concept for the world, and the story was decent. But what brought it down for me is the world felt artificial. It didn't feel lived in. It's open world, but the NPCs, it just doesn't feel alive. It feels checklisty. You can run up to a group of NPCs and they're being attacked by machines. You stop and save them, you kill the machines, they don't thank you, they don't say anything, they just slowly walk away and you can't even talk to them. Things like that were kind of immersion breaking. The characters also seem overly serious and quiet at times, like Aloy. At between 28 to 61 hours, this is a good game for sure. Don't come at me, Horizon fans. It just didn't vibe with me as much as it did for some of y'all, I'm sure. I do still recommend it though, and I enjoyed it overall. Stations! On my word, lose the PDC volley, then turn and burn. Just like series. Only this time, no dolls to keep you on the leash, yeah? 
At number 20, we have The Expanse, a Telltale series. So Telltale returns from the dead with this game, based on the Amazon show The Expanse, which is awesome, by the way. It's available for PlayStation 4 and 5, Xbox One, Xbox Series, and PC. Uh, this is a solid story with some fun choices. Kamina Drummer, the lead in this, is awesome in the show. She does really good here, too. It's quite short, and the choices often do not feel that meaningful in reality. It seems like you're going to get to the same place no matter what. My final thoughts on this one, it's five to six hours long. It's a fun little diversion or a palate cleanser between bigger games, especially if you're fans of the source material. If you see it on like a sale or something, I would recommend this one. What is this place? At number 19, we have Persona 5 Tactica, developed by P Studio for Switch, PS4 and 5, Xbox One, Xbox Series, and PC. This is a turn-based, tactical, RPG light, I would call it. Now, as with all Persona games, this has amazing music. It has a colorful cast, turn-based tactics combat, and a decent story. I definitely enjoyed all of those elements. What I would say brought it down a little bit, pretty simple combat as far as tactics games go. There's not much agency over the story as well. There's no real choice or consequence as far as I could tell. It's pretty much a linear game. They give you some choices of dialogue, but it's pretty much different flavors of saying the same thing. So, nothing too crazy there. Um, having just played one of the tactics games that will come up later in this list, this one felt a bit bland combat-wise due to its simplistic nature. But with that said, it's 25 to 30 hours long. It was enjoyable. I love the music and the vibes. The story was decent enough. It is worth a play. I haven't seen these Mongols before. They claim to follow someone called the Eagle. I have to go back. At number 18, we have Ghost of Tsushima Iki Island Expansion. This is an expansion from Sucker Punch to the incredible main game, which may or may not be included later in this list. For PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5, you see Jin Sakai taking up the sword again to go to Iki Island and deal with a unique Mongol threat. As with the main game, this has beautiful visuals and colors, super fun combat with some new elements, and it's a new five to nine hour story and adventure for you to enjoy. The negative, I would say, as with most DLCs and expansions, it doesn't hit the same high notes or have the same emotional resonance as the main game, owing to its shorter runtime and side story feeling. It's definitely a fun game. If you're a fan of Ghost of Tsushima, which you should be, you gotta play that game if you haven't. I would say this is a must play. At number 17, we have Yakuza Kiwami, an action adventure from RGG, available for PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Xbox One, Xbox Series, and PC. Originally released back in 2005, this is a remake. It came out in 2017. This tells the story of Kazuma Kiryu, the Dragon of Dojima. His first real game, not counting the prequel, Zero. Um, I believe this is the start of the core series. It has an amazing story, great acting and voice performance from the cast, and as with all Yakuza games, great funny side content as well, fun mini games, all that stuff. Bad side, I would say the game does feel a bit dated, owing to the fact that it's a remake of a 2005 game. This is most felt in the combat. Combat isn't the best, but it is serviceable. Overall, this is a great game. will take most players 18 to 33 hours to beat. For anyone who's not yet played Like a Dragon or Yakuza games, I highly recommend these games. Kiwami's a great place to start, as is Zero. RGG is very unique and an awesome team. I'm glad they're getting a lot more love and attention from the West now, like they deserve. All right, number 16, we have Jade Empire. Like the previous game, this game also came out in 2005, but unlike it, this is not a remake. I played the original Xbox version on the Series X. It's a choice-based, 
martial arts RPG game from the GOATS Bioware, the follow-up to their 2003 Game of the Year, Knights of the Old Republic. I beat this game back on the original Xbox long ago, but wanted to go back and replay it to see if it's lived up to all the hype. And it didn't live up to all the hype, but it was still good. Uh, the game is available for all Xbox consoles and PC, as well as mobile even. has a great story with choice and consequence, a cool world with lots of lore, and Bioware's greatness. The negatives, it doesn't live up to the memory that I had. The age is very apparent. A remake would be amazing for this. Combat and the overall graphics are a bit dated and janky. The story is awesome, but not as good as the nostalgic memory that I had of it. Overall, still a great game. No regrets playing it. If they ever remake this, I'll be there for sure. It's 17 to 30 hours to beat this one, and it's worth that time for sure if you've never played it. You see things others can't. Number 15, Ghostwire Tokyo. From Tango Gameworks, this is an action-adventure game set in a spooky version of Tokyo. Released on PlayStation 5, Xbox Series, and PC. Ghostwire Tokyo is a very unique experience. Uh, it has awesome, unique combat. Very cool, spooky setting in a mostly deserted Tokyo. Really, really unique and cool. It's empty, haunted, awesome backdrop. The story was solid. On the downside, some people have reported performance issues, but I didn't experience any of that personally, but something to keep your eye out for. For those who don't like Ubisoft-style open-world games, they may not be a fan of this because it is very much that checklisty, clear-the-map nature. This game is a fun time. I recommend it for anyone who likes open-world games, Japan, spooky settings, etc. The combat's very fun and unique, and it feels really good pulling out the strings and shooting out the, all these abilities and elements and stuff. The game will take you 11 to 22 hours to beat on average. I greatly enjoyed my time. Nothing ever stays nice. It always turns bad. Things aren't always nice. You can change them. At number 14, we have a Plague Tale Requiem from a Sobo studio comes the follow-up to A Plague Tale Innocence, a stealth adventure game where you play as Amicia Darune to help protect and escort her little brother Hugo in a French medieval setting. Released on PlayStation 5, Xbox Series, Switch, and PC, this game features amazingly beautiful graphics, really unique cool setting, and fun stealth puzzle gameplay. As the negatives, I would say it is slightly longer than the first game, which in my opinion made it not as good. It didn't feel as tight. This could be a positive for many people though, but for me, somewhat of a negative. Overall, it was a great game, well worth the 17 to 20 hours it'll take you to beat. You do need to play the first game Innocence first, in my opinion. Both are absolutely worth playing. You were missed. Whatever caretaker put you through back in the day did a real number on you. Number 13, we have Marvel's Midnight Suns. From Firaxis, the devs behind the modern XCOM games, Midnight Suns is a turn-based strategy RPG light game. Featuring popular heroes like Iron Man, Wolverine, Captain America, Ghost Rider, Blade, etc. Using cards, which are kind of like skills, you get to customize and upgrade. It has a fun story and experience. Awesome heroes, lots of fun customizing and powering up your cards and abilities. The combat was fun and deeper than you may think. On the negative side, the social elements between missions and the exposition sometimes gets a little out of hand, but you can skip most of it. I did have a ton of fun with this one and definitely recommend for Marvel fans and fans of XCOM or tactical type games. Firaxis delivers again for sure. I'm personally a fan of this developer. It's about 37 to 62 hours long, depending on how much you want to play the missions. I don't regret any of the time that I invested into it. Recommend it. The my favorite Merc. Welcome to Dogtown. There's a job. Coordinates provided. You know what to do. Number 12, Cyberpunk 2077 Phantom Liberty. From CD Projekt Red comes a massive expansion to the amazing original game. Available on PS5, Xbox Series, and PC. 
Cyberpunk is one of my all-time favorites, so I was excited to go back to it. This expansion is 13 to 22 hours long, and it was definitely a fun ride. It adds new story, quests, and combat styles to the base game, and a new dog town area for you to explore. It has beautiful graphics, awesome story, Judy, fun combat, many ways that you can approach it, choice and consequence, several different endings, and it has Judy in it. For the negatives, just like with Icky Island previously, it's an expansion. And as such, the story just doesn't feel as fleshed out or impactful to me. Even though this is lengthy and a good one, it's not like the full game really, but it is still excellent. Final thoughts? It's more cyberpunk. Hard to go wrong. I definitely recommend this ride for all cyberpunk fans. If for some reason you still haven't jumped in and played Cyberpunk 2077, it's the best time to do it right now. You will not regret it. My advice, pick female V, way better voice acted. And as a plus, you get to hook up with the undisputed best girl, Judy. The path we're on is terribly dangerous. But I do not know where it leads. Number 11, Hogwarts Legacy. From developer Avalanche Software, Hogwarts Legacy is an open world adventure action RPG. Available for PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Xbox One, Xbox Series, Switch, and PC, it lets you live the life of a Hogwarts student. You can fly around on brooms, cast spells, go to classes. This game was the number one selling game of 2023 until Call of Duty came out. That's very impressive, despite all the drama that surrounded it. For the pros, this has great graphics, fun combat, a pretty good story. If you're a Harry Potter fan, this game is 100% for you. Avalanche did a great job bringing this game to life. If you're not a fan of Ubisoft style open worlds, you may not like this one as much because it's very much in that vein and that style. There's no real choice and consequence in this game. It's very linear. It's hard to be a bad guy. Even the rude options that you can pick still sound pretty nice. But you can kill people with forbidden curses, so there is that. Final thoughts, it's a great game that definitely warrants its 26 to 43 hour runtime. I enjoyed it and I do recommend it for Potter fans and just fans of open world games. No regrets from me. As we're about to enter the top 10 of this list, I do want to take a second to say that if you have been enjoying this video, please go ahead and feel free to leave me a like rating. Let me know that you enjoyed it. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think of my list, what you disagree with, what were your top three or five games, etc. I put a lot of time and effort into this video, and I hope you're enjoying it. Let's move on. I won't ask again. Where is your son? In good hands. Number 10, A Plague Tale Innocence. Again, a Sobo Studio is back on the list. A Plague Tale Innocence is the first game in the series. Again, you're going to be playing as Amicia, trying to protect and transport little Hugo. He's being hunted in a rat-infested, plague-ridden France. This game has solid graphics, but not as good as Requiem's. It's more of a double-A affair. The stealth gameplay and puzzles are a step up from the sequel, in my opinion, though. Both characters feel more helpless which makes everything feel more impactful. Like, you really, really want to protect Hugo, and every step feels just very powerful. It has an awesome story. Its shorter runtime makes it feel tighter and better, in my opinion. As I mentioned, this is not really a AAA experience, more of a AA, so there is a little bit of jank. Puzzles and stealth are core here, so if that's not for you, and it's not usually for me, but I still got hooked. You might not like it if you're not a big fan. I love this game. We are in the top 10 now for a reason. It's a short 11 to 13 hour game, and I definitely recommend it. Number 9, we have Sakura Wars. From developer Sega CS2 R&D. Yes, that is indeed their name. Comes Sakura Wars. It's set in a steampunk 1940s Imperial Tokyo. You play as the squad captain for the Flower Division. It's a somewhat Persona-like action role-playing visual novel. Very unique, 
sleeper game. If you are a weeb, if you are a JRPG fan, this is for you. You'll be managing the theater, doing social link type activities with the girls to improve your relationships and learning about them. You'll be fighting demons and mechs. It is available for PS4 and PlayStation 5. It runs between 21 and 26 hours to beat. Uh, this is a really cool 3D anime art style that pops and it looks really good. Mixed with some anime scenes which look less good. Uh, Persona like social links as I mentioned. Peaceful day management, talking to your girls and all that. And then you have combat with the mechs versus demons. The story is quite good and quite strong, especially towards the end. It really heats up and gets even kind of dark at some places. Uh, for cons, the combat is a bit middling. Nothing to write home about. The deeper you get, though, the more you get good and perfect it. It feels better. Final thoughts. The story and characters are the winner here. 3D anime style is unique and very well done. The characters have a ton of personality and you will like all of them. Uh, this game's a sleeper hit and I strongly recommend, like I said, for weebs and JRPG fans, Soccer Wars. We have to talk. Number 8, Marvel's Spider-Man 2. We're really getting to the heavy hitters now. At number 8, Spider-Man 2 from developer Insomniac, available for PlayStation 5. It's the third Spider-Man game from them after the amazing 2018 Spider-Man. And the short follow-up, Miles Morales. Here you're going to play as both Spider-Men, Peter Parker and Miles Morales, to save the city of New York as per usual. This game has great graphics, amazing recreation of New York. The story is solid. The combat is great and you have a lot of abilities for both the Spider-Men. On the negative side, Mary Jane missions are back, but at least they're not as bad as before. Marvel style humor is in full effect here, of course, with the one-liners, so it is what it is there. Final thoughts on this, it's a great game. 17 to 23 hours to beat, 28 hours or so to platinum, which I did. In my opinion, it's not as strong as the 2018 game, but I still had a lot of fun. I recommend it for comic book fans, action fans, open world fans, any PlayStation gamers looking for something to play. I imagine most of you have already played it given how popular it is. But yes, good game. At number 7 we have Wasteland 3. My very first game from developer In Exile, and let me tell you, I am definitely a fan of theirs now. It's important to note the gameplay that you're seeing in this video is from an older reveal trailer. It doesn't 100% reflect the actual game. They did make some tweaks, such as you're seeing like the close-up first-person kind of uh, dialogue. A lot of the actual dialogue is pulled back in an isometric view, but some of it is up close like this. This is set in post-apocalyptic Colorado. You lead a squad of desert rangers with tactical XCOM-like combat. Plenty of choice and consequence with lots of decisions. You can really make your impact on the story. This is available for PlayStation 4 and 5, Xbox One, Xbox Series, and PC. Awesome story, deep world, great deep tactical turn-based combat, choice and consequence, replayability. It's awesome. As a negative, Isometric gameplay, like a CRPG, it's going to take a little bit of time to get used to. It did for me if you're not already. Some people may not be a fan of that, but if you give it the time and you get used to it, it's so good. I'm now a huge fan of In Exile. I cannot wait for their next game, Clockwork Revolution. I see why they're now considered RPG masters. At 37 to 49 hours to beat... It's not a huge commitment, and I definitely recommend this for RPG fans or tactics fans. Ready? What do you think? Tied for the number five spot with the next game, my co-game of the year for 2023, Final Fantasy 16. Developed by Square Enix Creative Business Unit 3 for the PlayStation 5 and coming to PC at some point. 
this game was interesting for me because at first I was not feeling it. I almost dropped the game. The first third or more of the game, I was button ma you got to button mash the combat. My thumb was literally getting sore and hurting, but I'm glad I stuck with it. I'm really glad because it starts to get really good. You get more abilities. The story really heats up. The music is insane. The music's incredible. The late game combat with ability chaining and all the elements. The story is insane and some of the boss fights are really good. Some negatives, the early game combat, like I said, some of the boss fights you have to defeat like five times. And this is not an RPG really. It's more of an action adventure. So that's a negative for hardcore Final Fantasy fans who like the role playing elements, but it's still excellent as a one-off tale. As indicated by it being my co-game of the year, I really love this game. I'm glad I stuck with it and didn't drop it early. It's about 38 hours to beat the game, and it's worth every single minute. Um, I don't want all Final Fantasy games to be like this. I do like the Final Fantasy VII Remake-style combat and more RPG, but this was a fun ride. I miss my dear darling in New Atlantis As I wander the blackness of the deep abyss my ship is in tatters, all dented and worn But I trust my old engine to get back by morn Way, oh, out in the blackness Way, oh, out in the void Way, oh, give me back to my true love As quick as an old asteroid Coming in tied for number five, my other co-game of the year, we have Starfield. Definitely the most discussed game of the year, with I heard 540,000 articles and videos made about it. This pick may be controversial to some of you, but from developer Bethesda Game Studios for Xbox Series and PC, I loved this game. I spent over 100 hours in Starfield. Yes, it does have its flaws, but overall, the narrative, the world, the handcrafted content, it absolutely grabbed me in a way that very few games do. The drama around this game, I find much of it to be disingenuous and, frankly, SEO farming. I think a lot of people are doing it just for clicks and for views because they know it's going to get that reception. People are going to be arguing in the comments and stuff like that. It's an 85 on Open Critic. So many people love it. A lot of people don't as well, and I do understand that. The positives, the story, the faction quests were so good. The choice and consequence, there is replayability. The music is phenomenal. Deep RPG elements from the skills, crafting ships and bases. On the negative, we all know what the problem with this game is. It's too big. It's too damn big. 1,000 planets leads to disjointed, empty filling worlds too many loading screens, fast traveling, etc. So I, I definitely feel that and I understand. What I did, I stuck to the quests and I let them guide me to the interesting content because yeah, it's just too big. As my co-game of the year along with Final Fantasy 16, you know how I feel. I absolutely love Starfield. It is no Skyrim, but only a handful of games ever made are. Skyrim is one of the best games ever made. What BGS did with the story, the faction quest, the handcrafted bits are so good in my eyes that it carried the experience. With that said, I'm really ready for BGS and Todd Howard to calm it down a little bit, and I can't wait for Elder Scrolls VI, a return to one world open map BGS storytelling and exploration that I think will be impossible to miss on. The rest of the games are not from 2023, which is why the two above it were tied for Game of the Year. Sam, I'll be waiting for you on the beach. Rebuilding America isn't going to get rid of the BTs. At number four, Death Stranding. Here we go with another somewhat controversial pick from Hideo Kojima, a game by Hideo Kojima, developed by Kojima Productions and produced by Hideo Kojima. Okay, let me stop. This was my first Kojima game that I've actually beaten, believe it or not, and I absolutely loved it. Yes, it is kind of a UPS simulator, but I don't know if it was the mindset I was in or what, but it was very cathartic and relaxing. Carrying those packages around, watching your step on the terrain, keeping your balance, keeping it in good condition. You got to spray off the time rust on it. It was very fun and I really enjoyed it. Available for PlayStation 5, PC, and mobile. 
and maybe PS4 too, I think. Not sure. This game will take you 36 to 57 hours to beat. The world and the music and the serenity, the atmosphere, the creepy, weird story, the bits of combat, I enjoyed all of that. Uh, no real negatives, I would say. I can say this game is not going to be for everyone. You really have to be in the mood for it. It is slow and brooding at times, but I loved it. I cannot wait for Death Stranding 2 and OD. Kojima, you got me now. We don't want to kill any of you, but trust me, we will. Wake him up a little! Number 3, Red Dead Redemption 2. I finally got around to beating this one in 2023. I've tried twice before and I ended up dropping it due to length and just getting distracted. Rockstar's follow-up to the first amazing Red Dead Redemption game, available for PlayStation 4, PS5, Xbox One, Xbox Series, and PC. I'm sure most of you listening have already played this game. It's a prequel to the original Red Dead Redemption, which was released back on the 360 and PS3. It tells the story of Dutch Vanderlyn and his gang with Arthur Morgan and John Marston featured heavily in there. The graphics and the world detail are insane. The story was incredible. The characters and setting, also good. On the negative side, I would say the length. Some parts drag a little bit. There are shooting galleries. There's so many enemies. There'll be like a cabin, and somehow a hundred people will pour out of this cabin, and you're just gunning them all down. So that's a negative, but also kind of fun at the same time. Overall, with a runtime of 50 to 82 hours, this one is a wild ride, a near masterpiece visually and story-wise. The game looks so real, it almost feels like real life at times. It's a great recreation of the Wild West with some really lovable characters. The epilogue probably could have been cut out and sold as DLC and no one would have complained, but they included it all in one package. Definitely worth a play if somehow you missed this one. I will say, however, I do prefer the original a little bit more, but you can't go wrong with either. The temple's close. At number two, Ghost of Tsushima. Here we go with the full game from Sucker Punch. I beat this back in 2019 on the PS4, but I replayed it in 2023 and I got the Platinum on the PS5. I could have included this and the Icky Island in one, but I decided to separate it to have the synergy of 23 games beaten in 2023. And also, they were separated in time, too, because I beat the original game, then I went and played Final Fantasy XVI before swinging back to beat Icky Island. Anyone who knows me, you know how much I love and how much I sweat this game. The beautiful visuals, the awesome setting and the colors, really fun combat, the wind guiding you, the stories and the characters, it's goaded for me. The bad, there's nothing bad. It's a masterpiece. The only bad thing is that the game ends. I have a much longer video titled Why Ghost of Tsushima is the best PlayStation exclusive of all time. Recommend you check that out if you want to hear more, so I'll keep this short. You gotta play this game. Did I just do that? Well, definitely with my assistance. I did not just do that. We did. I just moved shit with my mind. Perhaps our connection has somehow awoken some abilities. I just moved shit with my mind. I just keep hearing I, I, I. I just moved shit with my freaking mind! <laughs> yeah, okay, that is something I do now. I do magic, talk to sentient cuffs, kill jacked up beasts. You know what? I'll probably fly next. At number one, Forspoken. Wait, what? Stop it. Get some help. We have been expecting you. Number one, Persona 4 Golden. Here we go. From 23 games I beat in 23, Persona 4 Golden, developed by Atlas P Studio, Available on PlayStation 4, PlayStation Vita, PS5, Xbox One, Xbox Series, Switch, and PC. With a runtime of 68 to 84 hours, this game is a true gem. I struggled with whether to rank this game or Ghost of Tsushima higher, but ultimately I decided to go with Persona 4 Golden in the end. 
It's just such a great narrative and awesome characters in a stylized Japanese setting. The story is incredible. The characters are so good. The social links are amazing. The combat, the music, it's all S tier. There's really nothing bad to say other than that there are different endings. And if you didn't know that, you may miss out on the golden ending. I recommend using a guide to make sure that you don't miss out. One of my all-time favorite games, Persona 4 Golden, is a masterpiece that I highly recommend to anyone who likes JRPGs, RPGs in general. The style, the combat, the music, the cast of characters, it's so good. You will love and care about these characters as if they were really your group of friends. Well, that does it here, folks. I hope you all enjoyed this video. I put a lot of time, over 10 hours, into this video from start to finish. Like I said, I wrote over 4,000 words of notes. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you could, if you enjoyed, please leave me a like. Drop a comment. Let me know what you thought. What do you disagree with? What are your top games from 2023 or in general? Thank you guys so much for watching this lengthy video, and have a great day. At number 23, we have Ravenlock. Ravenlock is an indie action RPG from Coco Cucumber, available for Xbox Series, Xbox One, and PC. This is a cool little indie adventure with a unique art style. Um, as you can see from the video... Are you serious? I'm recording a damn video! What the hell?